up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano's in the building. New Mano! Well, that boy hey. time, man. And let's talk about some of these Vegas residencies. I feel like this is really the place to be. It's really mm. fun. You know, Lunell was up here recently, and she's been doing her residency in Vegas. Right. We all see how amazing it's been Usher. for Usher. Yes, and so now Wu-Tang has announced their first ever Las Vegas residency for next year. Dope. So you'll be able to see them February 9th to the 10th, also March 22nd to the 23rd. And who knows, I'm sure they're going to extend it. Don't forget, New Edition's residency also starts February 28th, which is going to be exciting. And Jodeci is also going to have a Vegas residency next year that starts on March 15th. Mm, nice. I'm, I feel like I want to go. The Jodeci one going to be crazy. Yes, all of them. New Edition, Wu-Tang. Edition, yeah. I would go to all of those. So I think we're going to have to make some um, Vegas trips, you know? What Why are you not? looking like that for, Mano? Thinking which one would you make, go to? Make yeah, it, which one? Well, I'm thinking about who could I make it with. You got to bring a young lady to. This is what I'm saying. Who could I make see, it with? Um, I think to see Jodeci and New Edition. Exactly. Now you go with the fellas to go see Wu Tang, but. You well, know. my uncle and them. Yeah, your uncle and them. Yeah. I listen. I used to work for Wu Tang, so you know I'm gonna be right there, front and center. All right. Now Oprah was on Sherry, and I love Sherry Shepard's uh, show, and so she sat down with her and was basically talking about her own legacy, and then she did something that I thought was amazing and well-deserved for Sherry Shepard. What Maya said to me that day in her kitchen, she said, it's every audience member who ever came, yeah. from wherever they came from. Yes. And they sat in that audience and they had an experience, and they went home and they decided, I'm gonna do better. Yes. It's every life you touch, so it's not one thing. So for me to be able to see you on your own show with your name on it, it is the passing on. So you're officially passing the baton? I'm passing the baton. That's huge. To have Oprah say, I'm passing you the baton? Right. To Sherry Shepard? Shout out to you, Sherry. Sherry Shepard been to uh, Chelsea House a couple times. She Shout has? out, to, Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Sherry Shepard. And she mentioned it on, um, on her show. Oh, that's sweet. I love that. And she's so funny. Yeah. Uh, to me. Now, in addition to this, Sherry, of course, asked her about that viral video when Oprah was just on Drew Barrymore's show and Drew Barrymore was like stroking her arm. Yeah, I saw that. And people were like, what is going on here? Boundaries, you're in her personal space. People had issues with that, but here's what Oprah said. Were you uncomfortable at any point? Not a bit. I was actually <laughs> comforted by the stroking of the really? arm. Really? I went home and told Stebbin, you got to stroke my arm. I thought it was endearing. Stebbin. Stebbin. Yes. Stebbin. Okay, that was on TMZ that they asked her that. Um, also, Oprah has revealed that the color purple producers wanted Beyonce or Rihanna for the new musical remake. Did you know that? No, Can you I imagine? Know. So it's a it's a musical? Yeah, it's a musical, The Color uh. Purple. And it's going to be in theaters um, December 25th. It stars Fantasia. But I know Fantasia is going to do an amazing job. Her is in it. Uh, Danielle Brooks, Taraji P. Henson, Holly Bailey. So uh, Steven Spielberg is back as a producer along with Alice Walker, Quincy Jones, and a whole lot. It looks good, though. Yeah, I love The Color I read Purple, the book. too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I read the book. I read The book is crazy. And you've seen the movie. Yeah, but the book is really... It is. Yeah. Amazing. Alice Walker. All right, and Taylor Ricks recently was on with Complex Sports, and she was talking about the fact that, you know, she's very good looking. Mm -hmm. Guys always talk about that. I know and so people try to act like athletes say outland outlandish things on her interviews, and it's because of how she, quote, oh. looks. But here's what she had to say. People confuse just the fact that I can ask a good question with the way that I look. And I think that without even realizing it, it can be a bit diminishing to the work that I put in for the interview. This happens on men's podcasts all the time that athletes come on there and say something wild, but nobody says that it's because of the man. They say, oh, that was a good conversation. Mm. That's a fact. I think in general, also, women just tend to get diminished about questions that they ask, like if, I asked a question here, but somebody else asked the same question somewhere else. They'd be like, oh, she's so no, why is she doing that? But then somewhere else, it's like, that was a great question. Hmm. You know, so I, I get it. It's harder. And then with Taylor, the way she looks, people always have things to say. And they also act like you only get certain things. Because, because of your looks. But she is really somebody who grew up, you know, as a child of athletes, family members who right. are professional athletes. She grew up loving this. All right, and that is your Yeti. When we come back, we have About Last Night, where we discuss what we did last night. And I know you were out saving the city, Mano. It's, I have to. It's way up. Way up.